challenges. So before looking at some examples, I'd like to take a moment to lay out a rationale for a multiliteracies approach to developing advanced writing competencies, and also a rationale for linking reading and writing through literary texts. <clears throat> so here you have a couple of quotes related to uh, writing within a multiliteracies approach. And these um, basically are highlighting the fact that learners need more practice, more opportunities to use extended discourse. Um, so they need more opportunities to write, they need more opportunities to speak in discourse-like texts. Um, and that this is especially important in academic settings where we're training people to go out into the world to use the foreign language. They also need multiple opportunities to, to write and speak on a variety of topics for various audiences um, and for a number of different purposes. Okay? Um, these statements have implications for the entire undergraduate curriculum, not just the advanced curriculum, and suggest that developing extended discourse competence should be a goal from the very beginning of foreign language study. If we do not adopt this goal, as is common in bifurcated programs, learners arriving in advanced level courses are not necessarily familiar with writing in a variety of genres, genres that they are assumed to be able to manipulate when engaging in analysis of literary cultural content. A broad dynamic view of literacy development that takes into account linguistic, cognitive, and sociocultural dimensions, and a pedagogical approach grounded in the creation and interpretation of texts through the four pedagogical acts and principles of literacy create these opportunities. Another important implication of the multiliteracies approach is that reading and writing are viewed as complementary modalities rather than as separate skills to be practiced independently of one another. And here you have a graphic of what a traditional way of thinking about reading and writing in foreign language courses often is, where students read a text at home, they come to class, they talk about it, they maybe prepare to write, and then they go home and write. And what ends up happening is that learners are doing the things they find the most difficult on their own at home without any support. Reading and writing are not collaborative in any way. They're relegated to the home and then discussed in class. Um, in a multiliteracies approach, reading, writing, and speaking are seen as complementary processes that take place both inside and outside of the classroom, which you have represented here as sort of overlapping modalities, right? So when we do this, students get help with those competencies that they find the hardest through collaboration with peers and their instructor. They can work on strategies and skills in the class, apply those out of the class, and it also accounts for the individual and social nature of these literacy acts. So if we think about reading, for instance, we often think of reading as an individual act, right? We sit at home with a blanket with our cat curled up next to us and we read a book. But think about reading the newspaper in the morning with your partner sitting across from you and say, oh my gosh, did you know that this happened? This makes reading a social act. Or if you belong to a book club, right? That's a social aspect of reading. Right? So it's not just a solitary act. Um, and the same thing with writing. If you think about exchanging emails or instant messages with people, that's social writing, right? which is very different from maybe writing for an academic journal if you're intending to publish something. Another reason to base writing and reading is that it allows learners to be apprentices in the authoring process, both through reading and then writing based on the model readings that they do. This idea is captured in the first quote on the next slide, which sums up the rationale for linking reading and writing quite nicely. The second quote by Kern sets us up to think about literature as an appropriate text type for apprenticing students in advanced level writing tasks because literature is imaginative, creative, and emotional. So why literature? Well, as I've already said, literature is a gateway to authoring, so it's a way of moving from reading to writing. Not only does it provide opportunities for students to write about literature, as they often do in analytical essays, but it also provides an opportunity for them to create literature in creative writing tasks, and that's what I'm going to talk about in just a moment. Literature also serves as the basis of, for the study of language forms and conventions in a socially situated context, and what's more socially situated than literature, right? I mean, it's always sort of contextualized within a historical context or a particular cl political climate or it's making comments, commentary on social practices. 
So it's very rich ground for looking at sophisticated cultural content, and learners can see that language can be manipulated in different ways to talk about that content. Moreover, different literary genres have different characteristics, right? And so students can make comparisons across genres and understand how language works for that, those purposes as well. And then finally, why another reason for using literature is that implemented across curricular levels, literature can help unify bifurcated language programs. I know I keep coming back to this, but um, it's sort of my, my data. So, um, in what follows, I'm going to show you two examples of reading to write through literature, one implemented in an advanced composition course and the other in an advanced grammar course. Both examples focus on creative writing based on literary texts, a writing genre that students do not regularly experience in advanced level courses, but which can develop their ability to engage in extended discourse beyond functional informational language use. Moreover, creative writing can make more transparent those linguistic and schematic resources necessary for interpreting literature. The idea being that students read a literary text, they analyze and discuss linguistic and schematic resources, and then instead of just analyzing them in a paper, they actually apply them and use them in their own writing, these linguistic and schematic resources. The aim of both courses was to bring literary cultural content to classes that typically focus on discrete point learning of language forms and conventions, or on writing with the study of grammar and stylistic features as an aside to support writing. Keep in mind as you look at the examples that they could easily be implemented in a literature or culture course with the purpose of explicitly developing students' writing competencies while simultaneously focusing on textual analysis. The reason I'm focusing on two advanced language courses is because I don't teach literature. I'm a linguist and so I teach advanced language courses and linguistics courses. Um, I don't have the opportunity to apply this in literature courses because my colleagues won't let me teach them. So. Um, okay, so the first example is from Advanced Composition, and this is adapted from a manuscript that's currently under review that I co-authored with Heather Allen at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, so please don't cite anything because it hasn't been accepted for publication. Um, so the goals of the Advanced Composition course were to sensitize students to relationships between form and meaning, to provide them experiences in creative writing, and to develop uh, academic speaking skills. Okay. Um, the organization of the course was into four modules. So each module focused on one author and one literary genre. Um, and in each module, students had the opportunity to write creatively in the genre that they had studied. So in the first module, they wrote a descriptive tale. In the second module, they wrote an ethnotext. In the third module, they wrote a short story. And in the fourth module, they wrote a prose poem. And I'm going to be focusing on the example of the, from the poetry, the prose and verse poetry from Baudelaire. Um, and then in terms of instructional focus, there was a progression in every model, a consistent progression in every module from reading focused to writing focused activities. So reading focused activities involved analysis, discussion, interpretation, looking at available designs in the text, analyzing their links to meaning, um, and writing focused activities, which I'll talk about in detail, focused on things like generating ideas, writing, revising, and so on. Another instructional focus was, of course, the interpretation and use of linguistic and schematic resources and texts to design meaning. So this was framed within the multiliteracies approach. OK, so the example that I'm going to talk to you about is um, from the poem L'Invitation au Voyage. So students did a whole module on the prose and verse versions of this poem. And the module actually began with students looking at the painting there, which is by Matisse. It's called Lux Cam et Volupté, which is a line from the poem. And so students begin by looking at this image and trying to brainstorm what they think the verse poem is going to be about. They do various um, activities for analyzing the verse poem. They then watch an animated version of the, um, I'm sorry, the prose poem. They begin with the prose poem. They watch an animated version of the verse poem and then read the verse poem and do genre comparison between the prose and the verse poem. And then the creative writing activity is to write their own invitation voyage, so an invitation to a voyage, in prose. So the pre-writing activities for this, and which was the final, the, the first activity up there, which was the final reading activity they did before moving to writing, was they created a list of 10 essentials for writing a Baudelarian prose poem. So they had to focus on 
available designs, so linguistic and schematic resources that were essential to a prose poem, how it's organized, what structures are used, what rhetorical moves it includes in their list of 10 essentials. And they began by doing this at home, and then they came into class and created a master list that everybody used as one tool to help them begin writing. The second tool they created was a graphic organizer to flesh out their ideas. So they picked what their topic was going to be. It could have been any topic they wanted to related to a voyage. They picked main themes for their topic and then generated a list of vocabulary springing off of each of those themes. And they worked with a partner to generate ideas further that would help them write their poem. They did an initial drafting of the poem. There's their transformed practice. And then in class, they did a series of peer review and instructor conferences, individual instructor consultations. Um, so there's the um, critical framing that they did related to this writing task. They revised, so over instruction. And then the uh, module concluded with a round table during which students read their poem aloud and provided a brief summary of it so that they could share it with their students. And there was a purpose to their writing. They didn't just write a poem and then be done with it. They knew they were going to have an audience because they were going to have this roundtable presentation with their peers. Okay. Um, so here you have um, some student reactions and some sort of descriptive statistic about, about this project. This actually isn't specific to the Baudelaire poem, but it is specific to the advanced writing class. And this is pulled from Allen 2009. So she found that roughly one third of the class thought their confidence in writing had been enhanced by the four creative writing modules that they had carried out, and that approximately half of the class thought that they had a greater awareness of why stylistic devices were used in text, both in reading and their own writing. So that's pretty significant. And then you have a couple of quotes from the students there that I pulled from this article. Um, the quotes speak nicely to the reading writing link. <clears throat> This example takes students beyond writing about literature to creating literature, based in large part on the knowledge they glean from textual analysis and interpretation. It attends to both linguistic development and the teaching of literary cultural content. The multiliteracies approach facilitates this by providing ample opportunity for exploring the linguistic, stylistic, and cultural content of literary texts, and for engaging students in interpretation, collaboration, problem solving, and reflection.